Hey, what's up, everybody? Just wanted to make a quick intro to show you guys that we're going to be making Rick Sanchez in Illustrator and Adobe Character Animator. Um, I know I say this in the beginning of the video again, but um, the reason I use vector artwork is so I can scale the character. You can see I'm using a live broadcast uh, software, piece of software, and that just means I can scale the character at any size in any resolution, and it's going to look really clear. So that's the reason I'm using Illustrator. But you can use Photoshop or any other program that's uh, made for pixel-based uh, artwork like um, Clip Art Studio, uh, Affinity Designer, all those things. You can use any art program as long as you can export as PNGs. Um, but just wanted to show you the character. This is what we're going to make. Um, you can see the character has got a little bit of rigging. He's pinned to the floor. I can grab his arms and pose them. I haven't made any hands or anything yet. This is gonna, that'll be for the uh, next tutorial. Um, and then instead of having the eyes follow my eyes, I have uh, it set up to where I can just hit arrow keys. So I'll show you how to do that. that. And then obviously the last thing is I make a full set of mouths in the video. Um, and you can see that it's uh, capturing my lip syncing live. So you can see when I smile, <laughs> character smiles and talks when I talk. I think the lip sync is actually um, a little bit better than what you're seeing now. There's a, a beta test out now. Um, but uh, yeah, also check out Digital Puppets. They are a UK based animation company. Um, link is in the description below. Um, that's where I learned a lot of this stuff and um, they sell puppets for this program and also have free puppets for you to learn with um, so also check out the home button here obviously um, they have a lot of puppets that you can use right here huge uh, selection to learn from and then also check out the YouTube channel OK Samurai um, that's the official Adobe Character Animator um, channel for this program as well. And they have a lot of tutorials on that as well. So um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. All right, here goes my second tutorial for Adobe Character Animator. And I'm going to recreate Rick Sanchez. And I know I've created him again already in Anime Studio Pro, Moho Pro. But I want to show you how to do this in Illustrator so you can set up a puppet that can be used in this program. And I just love the character. So um, also I'm using Illustrator because I like vector artwork instead of pixel based artwork like in Photoshop, um, mainly because you can change the size of your um, artwork without changing the, losing any quality. And also I'll show you a little trick on redrawing um, lines here in Illustrator. So I'm going to start off by importing a um, picture of Rick. This is just a model sheet that I found online, just like Anime Studio. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this 3 fourths position. So I'm going to right click and crop this image because I just want just this, this picture right here. And I'm just going to trace him completely. And Let's go ahead and crop him in like this, hit return. And then I'm just going to use the canvas button and click on the picture so it creates an artboard that's the same size and we'll get rid of that original one. Command zero in all Adobe products zooms into the window you're working on. And then I'm also going to use the direct selection tool and I'm going to hit command two and that's going to freeze frame. It's not going to freeze frame, it's going to just um, lock the layer with the artwork on it so I can't mess it up, move it around or touch it. So if I look at my layers palette, here's our artwork. And I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm not even going to worry about naming conventions or anything like that. I'm just going to start creating the entire character. So if you have a sketch of a character you want to make, you can follow along just by doing the same thing. So I'm going to start off by using the ellipse tool or the circle tool, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to go ahead and double click 
the uh, line or the stroke or the outline, whatever you call it, and click on the fill and leave that empty. Because really I want to just make the shapes. So I'll go ahead and start by drawing an oval for his head. And I'm going to make the stroke a little bit thicker. I'll make it three points thick. Maybe four. And then I'm going to use the pencil tool a lot. And this is just to give the uh, artwork more, uh, more hand-drawn feel. But I want to show you something. If you double click on this and you select keep selected and hit OK. So N is the shortcut key for the pencil. So if I have the pencil selected and I have my outline selected, if I draw on the line, I can readjust kind of where this line falls and it's going to make it a little bit um, more wonky, which is what I want. I don't want it to be perfect. I want it, the oval of his head to be kind of um, jelly bean shaped. So you can see if I start on the line and then end on the line, it just reshapes it for you, which is really, really helpful as far as redrawing something. So now I've kind of got that shape. I'm going to hit V, which is the direct selection tool, and I'm just going to move it over to the side. And then I'll go ahead and hit I, which is the eyedropper, and I'll select his skin color. And that just fills that in. And then I can go ahead and change the stroke to black. And actually what I should have done is I should have start with, started with his hair. So the, um, the other tool that I use a lot is the pen tool. So if I hit P, and it's right here, um, third down from the top left in the toolbox, or tool, uh, what a palette. And I'm just going to click on the ends of his hair. And right now it has a fill. Let's turn that fill off. Oops. Select the fill. Select no fill. And then we can change the stroke again just so it's easier to see. Green. And I'll go ahead and just make his spiky hair. I should have drawn this first so it would be underneath the head shape. But we can just change the layer ordering real quick. So I'm just guessing behind his head where these points are, putting them in here, and then completing the shape. Now again, I'm going to go ahead and hit N, which is the pencil tool, and I'm going to zoom in, and because it's still selected, I can start on the um, outline and just kind of redraw it a little bit. Again, this is just to make it a little bit more organic looking. Um, and because you keep it selected, you can just keep going over and over again until it looks right. Sometimes you might do it too much and it won't register. See how that didn't uh, reshape? Just make sure that you start on the line and end really close to the line. Otherwise it won't reshape. It'll draw a new line like that. Keeps doing that. So I can change this curve, make it more pointy. Um, but this is, I think this is really, really helpful um, as a tool for uh, drawing that a lot of people don't use or know about so oops and if you see me undoing it's just command Z just like in, in any other program so a lot of times all, all I do is try and redraw over the line and just because my hands not steady it kinda just moves it a little bit which again makes it look a little bit more wavy and that's all I'm trying to do here. This is just my preference. Um, another way to manipulate lines is to, to hold Shift C, which is Convert Points Tool. And you'll see it turns into this kind of upside down V. And if you hover over any line segment, and a line segment is just the line between two different points, you can actually bend and grab and manipulate um, the uh, endpoints. And then there's these little handles. I think they're called Bezier handles, and you can grab those as well and kind of move those around. So Convert um, Points tool is really something that I like to use a lot as well, just to kind of change the shape of lines. And then again, N is the pencil tool to kind of reshape. So that's all I'm doing right there. I'll hit V, which is the direct selection tool. Um, actually, let's color it first. I'll hit I for the eyedropper. Select the hair color. We'll change this stroke back to black. I'll double click on the stroke and then select black. Hit V, move this over. And then to move this backwards, I'm going to hit Command and is it left bracket. 
and that pushes the order of the shapes that you have selected so I just put it underneath the head and then I'm gonna use my arrow keys to kind of manually move the uh, points and let's see I'm just gauging the distance between his hair and his head right here that looks about right and then I'll grab both of them and move them kind of out of the way okay since we just drew the hair we can go ahead instead of the lips tool we'll use the rectangle tool I'll draw his eyebrows just a rectangle right there hit N which is the pencil tool and then I'll just uh, draw on the ends a little bit to curve them out and again I like it just because it makes it a little bit wonky and not uh, the straight the lines not so straight that looks good I'll hit V grab it and move this over on top of our forehead that looks about right and we could use this ellipse tool or the circle tool to do the eyes but I'm gonna go ahead and just draw them by hand and another thing I wanted to show you is if I hit N and select the pen pencil tool if I double click it there's this other thing called fidelity and what this is is if I set this down to accurate and draw it's going to uh, create the line almost exactly the way I drew it lots of different points um, but for this character I want to make smoother points so if I double click this and turn the smoothness up the smoother it gets the more um, Illustrator tries to smooth it out so even if I do kind of a wonky shape and connect it you see it kind of smooths it out which is really helpful if you're using a mouse and keyboard which is what I'm using I don't have a Wacom tablet so I'm leaving it on smooth and I know I want the fill to be white so I'll just go ahead and select that for his eye I'm just gonna draw around his eye and Illustrator is going to try and smooth out this circle for me but it won't be perfect which is okay because that's what I want it to look like so there's one eye and here's the other eyeball and I'll go ahead and hit V select both of those drag them over here and then I'll go ahead and this time I will use the circle tool or the ellipse tool and I'll come in and get, grab these pupils to make the pupils black turn off the stroke because we don't want to stroke around it or we don't need to now you could make a several um, Rick and Morty have these kind of scribbly eyes so I could put a whole bunch of shapes in here I'm just gonna leave them around so I'm just gonna draw a little pupil here and with the direct selection tool this is something that um, I use quite a bit as well as if I hold option down and hover over a object you'll see it turns into two arrows a black arrow and a white arrow that just means duplicate so I can just grab that and pull it over and there's our other pupil oops <laughs> I had the eyeball selected still I'll go ahead and select both of those hold shift down select them both and then change that uh, fill to white and the stroke to black and then let's grab these pupils hit V to move them over sometimes they're pretty small so and I'm holding shift down so they don't when I grab something and move them they don't go up and down unless I really go up like that but they'll snap to 90 degree angles so we're just kind of keeping all my artwork in line Oops. And his eyeball pupils right about there. That looks good. And then we'll just draw out the rest of the face. Um, let's go ahead and hit N. And we'll draw his ears. And I have that smoothing on so it'll just make it nice and round. Let's uh oh. Let's go ahead and hit I and select the um, head shape make sure that stroke is big three thick hit N again I'll grab the uh, other ear or make the other ear like that and the nose I'm not gonna complete the object meaning I'm not gonna close it which is have the points connect I'm just gonna draw his nose and when you do that there's actually a gap there's no line segment right here so it just kind of um, makes a line across with the color fill which is exactly what we want 
Actually, I'll hit N and reshape his nose a little bit. Let's turn the smoothness down just a little bit so we can get a kind of different shape. Oops. Just trying to get that little angle right. <laughs> there. It's a little too pointy though. There we go. So I'll hit V, grab these point or uh, the ears and the nose. Holding shift down, I'll move them over into place. Right about there. I'm just looking at the nose, and that is right about there. Then I can select the ears, do command bracket, keep pushing it back. Um, his ears should be out more. There, do that, command left bracket, keep tapping it till it goes underneath the head. And move that over a little bit. Alright, now we'll go ahead and draw the uh, mouth for now. And I'm just going to take the fill off, select fill, no fill. And we'll just go ahead and draw these creases around the lips. And then this kind of static neutral mouth. Hit V, grab these, and move them over. Right there. Okay, now we have the head all done. Let's go ahead and make the body really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool. It's going to make it really fast. So I'll start with the neck. Go ahead and drag and drop. And the pen tool, if you just click on parts, it's going to make new um, vertices or points. Um, if you click and drag, it'll give you those handles. So I'm going to make a curve for his neck like that and close the shape out. I'll hit I, select his skin color, I hit P for pen tool. I'm going to make the shirt underneath. So I'm just going to kind of go where his shirt is. I'm going to ignore the uh, arms for now. And you can see he's got that blue shirt underneath. Hit V, let me move this over. and. Hit I, select that color, and then hit V, move it back into place, holding shift down so it doesn't move up or down. Now we'll go ahead and use the rectangle tool again. Go ahead and draw his belt. Go ahead and draw his belt buckle. Hit V. I'll grab both of those, move them over a little bit just so I can pick the colors. Select the belt, hit I, use that brown. Hit V, select the belt buckle, hit I, change that color, hit V, grab them both again and snap that back into place. And point snapping is on, so if you get points really close to each other, they kind of snap like this, and that's under view. And snap to point right there. Just a handy little thing to have. I'll select the um, belt buckle and just squish it a little bit. Okay. Um, I'll hit M, which is the shortcut key for the square tool. Go ahead and draw his waist. Start by the belt buckle. Hit command, left bracket to push it underneath. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit I. Select the color of his pants. Hit M to draw his one of his legs. We'll just start down here, come up. I'm going to make it go into his waist just a little bit. Then I'm going to hit A, which is... Um, direct select, not direct selection, uh, yeah, direct selection, which is grabbing si single points. If I said direct selection for this, this selection tool selects everything. So if I use this first arrow, no matter what, if I click on an object, it's going to select all the points. Direct selection is the one that actually will um, grab individual points. So I can click on a point and I can use my arrow keys to move it or just click it and drag it. Again, Shift-C does the Convert Points tool. So I can grab the cuff of his leg, maybe even bend in or out his leg just a little bit so it's not so straight. Or I could use the pencil tool to draw it again. Um, let me hit V. I'm going to move the leg over for just a second. So this is a closed shape. That's why it has an outline on it. But I want the top to be open. So I'm going to use the scissor tool. I'll click on this point up here and this 
uh, this point up here and that actually cuts the points off. So now I can just select the line segment and delete that. So now it's open just like the nose and hit V and move that back into place. That's just so the uh, leg doesn't um, look like it's cut off from the waist. And let's go down to the bottom. Uh, to zoom in, I'm using Option and using my mouse wheel to zoom in and holding the space bar to move my canvas around. Then I'll hit M. I'll create a new square. Hit I, select a new color. Hit C. I'll bend this. And then I hit V. Command left bracket will push it underneath the pants. And maybe squishes sock in a little bit. Hit P for pen tool. Now we're gonna draw a shoe. And I can actually just do straight points like that. Shift C so I can grab line segments and pull this here, pull that there. Hit I, grab that color. And this is gonna be really handy to always try and find shortcuts when you're doing artwork. So I'll hit V, select everything, his entire leg, shoe, sock, pant leg. I'll do a Command C to copy, Command V to paste, right click on the object, objects, and then go to transform, reflect. Then just hit return, and that's gonna flip it horizontally. And we can move this leg over here, like that. Put that in place and I can hit A, which is the direct selection tool. And I'll just grab these points and move them for this foot. Again, um, just to show you the pencil tool, which I really love. I'm just pushing all these lines in. So I'll use N and I'll go ahead and redraw around his foot it making sure that it ends on the line two and that kind of just reshapes it like that oops and command left bracket to push it underneath and there we have his other shoe so now we've got the base of his body I'll go ahead and hit V Let's grab everything in his body and move that over. Kind of center it and command left bracket to push it underneath. And it went underneath his head, so there we go. Now let's do his arms. Actually, let's do his jacket. So I'll go ahead and hit P. Select his jacket and we're just gonna leave the arm off. We're gonna create one side. Turn the fill off. Click on fill. And you notice I did that even with the pen, pen tool selected. It's still working. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop so it gives me those bezier handles. And I'll go down to a point. And because I need to go in a different direction that's really sharp, usually if you do that, um, well, no, that still works. If I click down on this bottom point and then drag, we still get this curve and a good way to um, do these pen tool drags is to click and then just follow along the line see how I'm still on the line of his coat that gives you a really good curve so we'll do that and um, that closes the shape I don't have a fill in it yet but then I'm gonna go ahead and do his little collar click on those I'll hit V select the coat double click the fill and make that white Grab both of those, Command C, Command V, copy and paste, right click, transform. Uh, where is it? Transform, reflect. And OK, so it flips it. Get that in the position, kind of. Actually, let's delete that. That's This side's a lot shorter because he's turned a little bit. So let's do P. We'll just make this other side again using the pen tool. I'm just going to click and drag a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. 
and I have the white fill on, so that, but that's okay because it's not gonna interfere with anything. So there's that. Well, except now I can't see the collar. So let's hit P. Let's make that collar real quick. And move this back into place. Using my arrow keys. And Command C, grab these line segments and push them over a little bit. Maybe you just use the pencil tool. And then draw the line. Good enough. Okay, let's hit V. Grab the coat. Put that in place, kind of. And while we're over here, we can just go ahead and hit P and make the back of his coat. So I'm gonna select the bottom of his coat, go up here to about his waist, come down to the other corner of his coat, and then just make this kind of shape here. Hit Command or Shift C. Curve this up a little bit, hit I, select the color, and we're going to do command left bracket and keep tapping that until he goes all the way to the back. There we go. So it's settled in the back. All right, we're almost done. We almost we just have to do the arms real quick. So I'll hit P. And let's go ahead and do this. And I'll leave this open so there's no line segment right there. Um, we may fix that a little later, but for now we'll just leave it. Make the fill white though. And with the pen tool selected and you want to start a new segment, just hold command down and tap anywhere on the canvas and that releases the pen tool. But now I can do it uh, use the pen tool again, so I'll go ahead and draw his shirt underneath on his wrist. Draw a little square and hit I, select his shirt color again. Command left bracket, push that underneath, hit P, and hold command down and just tap on the canvas somewhere so we'll just make his hand now. I'm just gonna draw a little bit underneath that uh, the collar of his shirt. And I'm just gonna draw his hand. That. So I'm just clicking and for his fingertips I'm just pulling, clicking and pulling so we get these kind of uh, rounded edges. Again hit N for the pencil tool and then just redraw a little bit. If you feel like the fingers or whatever artwork isn't working quite right. And remember, Command Z always gets rid of your mistakes. So I use it a lot, a whole lot. And I'm just kind of smoothing out the fingers a little bit. Whoa, that looks weird. Eh, good enough for now. Uh, we'll go back to that. Let's go ahead and, with the hand selected, hit I, the eyedropper, and go ahead and select the color of his hand. N is for pencil. We'll just draw a little thumb line right there. So we got this arm. I'll hit V. Select the entire arm and its parts. Copy and paste. Right click. Transform. <laughs> right click. Transform. Reflect. Hit OK. So I'll put one arm here. Grab the other arm and put it here. There we go. We've got Rick Sanchez, all vector. Um, let's go ahead and select everything on him. Move him over and we're gonna uh, group him. So do a Command G so he's all together. Then we'll use the canvas tool or art tool, artboard tool. And since he's grouped, it's gonna make an artboard that fits him exactly. So now we can go ahead and get rid of the um, Reference picture, I'll do a command option two. That releases anything that's locked. I'll go ahead and select and delete it. Use the artboard tool and select that first artboard and delete that as well. So now we're just working with our vector, Rick. 
And now, so if I open if I open the layers, here's Rick, and it's just all one group, and there's just every single part that we've just um, drawn, belt buckle and all that stuff. So now now we're gonna start renaming everything so it's ready to use in Adobe Character Animator. So the first thing I'm gonna do. So I'm going to use the selection tool. I'm going to drag and dra drop everything over his head. Or actually, let's ungroup everything. I'm sorry. Because we need to have them all separated. We just grouped it just so we can make this artboard. But first things first, we need to ungroup. And let's go ahead and start naming stuff and grouping stuff. So I'll select everything in his head. Um, and not the neck and here's a really good trick or tip I should say so if you want to grab a bunch of stuff and like I don't want to grab the neck but I accidentally do or part of the body so it's selected that just hold option down and click on the parts you want to deselect or shift I'm sorry shift it's a shift uh, there we go so holding shift down is deselecting things that were selected. So now we have the head. I'll do a Command G. It groups it. And if you come over to the path or the um, layers palette, you can see which what we've just done because there's a little double circle. So it's really easy to spot where you, what you've just grouped. So I'll just go ahead and name this head. And let's go ahead and grab everything else in the body. I'll hold Shift down and select the head. And then we'll command G and group this, and we'll call this the body. Like that. Let's go ahead and put his head, the head layer above the body. And let's go in here real quick. Where's the neck? Let's put the neck above that shirt just so it's. There we go. Okay. So right now we have two groups the head and the body. Let's go ahead and rename stuff. So if I double click in the head, now we're in isolation mode. So we're now in just the head. You see the layers, it's not showing the body at all. So it's showing what we need. I'll go ahead and just start naming stuff just so it's easier to organize things and know what we're messing with in Adobe Character Animator. So I've selected the hair. You can see in the layer palette, it's got the double circle. So I'll just double click that and type in hair. Like this this is his right ear so I clicked on it right ear and left ear and eyebrow and just just wanted to say again it's really easy to know what you've selected because when you click on it it gets highlighted over here so it's easy even if they're out of order or whatever nose and the eyeball I'm gonna go ahead and select his pupil and hold shift down and select the eyeball because I'm gonna group those together and I'll go ahead and hit command G and rename his right eyeball do the same for the left eye Hold the shift down, select the pupil and the eyeball. Command G, group those together. Call it left eyeball. And let's go ahead and select parts of the mouth. Hold shift down, select the, oops, not the head shape. Just those parts of the mouth, Command G. Group. Right now we'll call it mouth. We'll go ahead and make a mouth sets so our character can talk here in a little while, but for now we'll just do that. And then the last one is a head shape. So we'll just call this head shape. There we go. So now we've got all the parts of the head um, labeled correctly and it's really easy to see what they are, which is gonna make it easier to uh, animate in Adobe Character Animator. Let's double click anywhere on the canvas. That takes us back out to the main window. Now we've got the um, body parts. Let's go ahead and select kind of his main body. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop with the selection tool. 
and I'll deselect the head by holding shift down, click on that, um, drag and drop over the, oops. Oh, what am I doing? Double click into the body, because that's what we need to do is start naming the body parts. So double click, now we're in isolation mode. The head's kind of grayed out because we're only going to work with the body. Now, let's go ahead and drag and drop over the body. Hold shift down so we can deselect the arms or anything else, any parts of the legs that we don't want to select. So now we've got everything selected here. Actually, we're going to need to select the legs too because if we do those separate, they're going to pop up in front of the uh, coat. So let's go ahead and grab those two. Let's do that again. Grab everything, hold shift down and deselect the arms. And we'll just group the, those things together. Let's open the layers and call this body. Then we'll go ahead and select the uh, his right hand and and uh, Command G group that right arm actually. Grab the other side. Command G left arm oops I didn't name that right this is the body and I didn't get the neck I can just drag and drop that in there there we go and this is the right arm so we can go inside these and also um, Okay, I'll hold command down because there's the, the hand and the little thumb uh, line also. So in the left arm, I'll go ahead and hold command down and just click on that circle. So we have both of those selected and group those together. And call this uh, left hand. Left arm. left cuff I think I call it collar on accident before let's put the cuff over the arm or over the hand I think and then the arm up top there we go that looks better go ahead and do the same with this one hold command down select the thumb line and the hand command G right hand again we're just renaming stuff and organizing to make sure everything um, is easier to animate and just organize in general for you. Um, right arm, right cuff. Just renaming, put the arm on top, then the cuff, and then the hand. Oh wait, yeah, that's right. So we've got the right arm. Let's open the body up. And I know this is the neck, even though I don't have it selected. And then, Let's double click. So we're going to go into isolation mode again. So we're going to go into the body group. Now we can go ahead and um, name some of the stuff. I'll hold shift down, select the uh, right side of his coat and that collar, group those together. Oops, command G and right side coat. Do the same for the other side. Hold shift down, select both of those. Command G. Left side coat. And trust me, this is, I know that renaming everything is kind of time consuming, but it's gonna save you a lot of time in the long run because um, having stuff named correctly is very important. Let's select this. We know that's the back of the coat back. I know this is the shirt. Oh. Um. Let's go ahead and select the uh, belt buckle. I mean, we can name them also. You want to get belt buckle. I can tell this is the waist just by looking at the little thumbnail. 
here's the belt hold command down I'm selecting all of those together and then just command G just calling it the waist it just looks better over here in the layers too when everything's named so we have all that um, and I could go in here and say sock shoes and all this stuff but we're just gonna select the right leg group all those parts together You can go back in and name them if you want. Um, and I don't think we need this. I don't know what this is. Delete that. Let's go ahead and select all these parts. Group those. Left leg. That looks pretty good. We'll just leave it at that. We can group the waist and the shirt together, but that, that looks good. Double click. That. And then let's go ahead and grab um, our name, the main layer, Rick Sanchez. So we have the head and body. Let's delete this bottom line or layer because that's empty now. So head and body, Rick Sanchez, let's go ahead and save this. And I'll save this to the desktop as an Illustrator file. Hit OK. And now we're going to start, uh, we're going to import our character into Adobe Character Animator and we'll start rigging. And there's going to be some issues, and I'm going to leave all of those issues and errors in there because I'm learning it myself, and I want you guys to see how to fix them and problem solve. So, um, part two will be here in just one second. Okay, here's the second part of uh, making Rick Sanchez an Adobe Character Animator. And we're in Character Animator right now, and I have Illustrator still open. So we've just created Rick, and now... We're going to switch back and forth. Um, I'll go to File and Import, and I'm going to go ahead and just import that Illustrator file into our scene. We'll create a new scene. And I'll just call it Rick. And drag that into the work window for the scene. And then drag um, the character in there as well. Should load here in just a second and your screen didn't freeze there it is and because he's vector he's really big and but the quality's the same so um, so in record mode the second tab right here at the top uh, go down to transforms because we want to shrink him down go to scale and we'll just scale him down like this and the reason why he's already moving is because we've labeled um, the head correctly already. So it's already connected to the head. And you can see the eyes are moving already. If I collapse that transform and open up the eye gaze, which controls the eyes. Right now it's reading the camera input, but it's uh, snapping to position. So now I turn that off. So now if I move my... Um, eyes left and right. Let me reset the pose. If I move my eyes left and right and up and down, it should be kind of following uh, my movement. Still looks like it's snapping though. Why is that? That's... There it is now. You can see it's kind of following my eyes. So we've already got a, a start on our character. Our puppet's kind of moving already. But um, we need to do a couple of different things. Let's go into the Rig tab, which is the first tab over here. Or the second, I guess the first one's the Home tab. But you can see our character's highlighted, and I can zoom out by holding Option and using my mouse wheel. And holding down Spacebar to move the uh, panel around. And the first thing we're going to do is we have the body selected, and we're going to go ahead and put pins on his feet. So we'll use the pin tool and I'll just pin his foot here and his foot there. Go back into record and just to show you what that does, it's kind of 
stuck his feet to the ground. So now when I move around my head and stuff, the character just looks like he's standing there, which is what we want. Now the arms. Um, now they shouldn't be highlighted. I think, uh, well, let's go ahead and rig it first. We'll go ahead and do the um, right arm, this arm right here. And I know we're supposed to connect it to the body, put this uh, pivot point up here, but it shouldn't be highlighted. Oh, I know why, it's not independent. So let's go back into our Illustrator file, open up our body, and under left arm and right arm, just put a plus in front of them. Uh, so shift plus, and, oops. And put a plus there, and then file, save as. And I think now, if I go back in the character animator, the arm should not be connected to the body. There we go. So, see that yellow line? That's showing everything that's part of the body. And now the left arm and right arm are independent. And you can tell by this little crown here. You can also just click this crown in the program, but it's. I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that um, naming your stuff correctly in your actual artwork file is really the best way to do it, just so you know that it's working. Um, so let's go to the right arm. And see now that pivot point is kind of hovering in the center. We're going to pull this up and connect it to the body. And you'll know when it's connected because it'll turn green. And put it right by his shoulder. Then we're going to put some joints into the arm. So we need to use this tool right here. Here it's called the handle tool. We're going to put one joint right where the elbow should be. And then another one where the wrist is. And also when you're putting in joints or handles, you can tag them. So I'll use the selection tool, click on this um, arrow, and the wrist one's still, uh, still selected. So I'll select that on the puppet. That just labels it. And this helps when we're gonna use different things like arm IK, which just helps the arms bend. So it's good to um, label everything so it works correctly. So now I'm selecting that elbow joint and I'll tag it here, it should show up there. And I think for the right arm, I think I can tag the pivot point to also be the right shoulder. And then we also need to, let's select the wrist and come down over to the bottom of the tag puppet and select draggable. And let's go back to record and see how well this works. So if I click on near the um, elbow, or I mean the wrist, I can grab the wrist, but you can see now his arm is super wonky and janky. That's because he doesn't have any bones yet. And um, we'll go back into the rig, and they don't use bones. They're called sticks in this program instead of bones. And normally, um, using the mouse wheel and option to zoom in, uh, you just put one stick in between the joints, and that should just work fine. But... Uh, there's a couple of guys called uh, Digital Puppets, and they are a UK-based company of professional animators that make puppets for this program. And they advise putting sticks on the left and right uh, of the arm, and that gives it a bit, bit of a better bend. So I'm just dragging this bone, or the stick, on the uh, left side and then the right side, indicating where you wanna keep the uh, artwork straight. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap and then draw the sticks on the left and right side um, going up to the shoulder of the arm, like that. And now let's go to record again and see how this looks. So now if I grab the, sh um, the wrist, you can see it's got a much better bend. And the arm's a little bit disconnected, but that's just because of the way I've drawn the artwork. I'll have to go back and fix that, but that's, it's good for now. We'll uh, leave it like that. And actually it's really stretchy. I think we can go ahead and add an arm IK. Again, this is just to help with the bending and stuff. So we'll go back to the rig. With the right arm selected, we can hover over here, 
to the right and add a behavior and say arm I arm IK. And if I collapse the tags, you can see in the behaviors now we have elbow strength, stretchiness, and all kinds of stuff. So we can actually turn the stretchiness down, go back and record, and it shouldn't stretch as much. Anyway, it's kind of stiff, kind of can't pull it all the way out now. And then we'll be able to, you can see that the arm bends a lot better. The joint at the shoulder does not look right, but that'll work for now. So we'll go ahead and do that with the other arm really quick, just so you can kind of review how to connect the arms and make them um, so you can bend them. Let's go ahead and use the handle tool. Make sure you have the left arm layer selected. Or actually, let's go ahead and move that pivot point so it connects to the body. Do that first up in the shoulders. With the handle tool selected, we'll create an elbow joint. Let's go ahead and open the tags over here. Tag that as elbow. Click right here on the wrist. Tag that as the wrist. Use our selection tool to select that top pivot point and make that the left shoulder. We'll go ahead and select the wrist to make sure that we click draggable so we can actually grab it and move it. Then we use the stick tool on the left and right of the parts of the arm you want to keep stiff. So I'm just dragging and dropping, leaving a little bit of space where the joint is, giving it some room to, to bend. And now we've got that arm going. Let's go ahead and test that too. Go back into record. And I can grab this arm and we can start posing our character. Looking pretty good, except for the uh, the joint in the um, in the shoulders. But we can go back and fix that a little later. Let's go ahead and start doing some other things. I'm going to show you um, switch layers. That is what they're called in Anime Studio or Moho, but we're, they're called triggers and swap sets in um, Adobe Character Animator. So first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and make his eyebrow. Um, Normally, when you're in Character Animator, you can raise and lower your eyebrows um, and it'll make his eyebrow move. But since he has a unibrow, I'm going to animate this with um, triggers. So what I'm going to do is go into his head and we're just going to make a few expressions using his eyebrow. So by uh, selecting the eyebrow in Illustrator, you can just select an uh, object by clicking on the circle next to the layer right here. And you can see it highlighted it, and I go ahead and copy and paste. So I'm gonna do a Command C, Command V, because we're gonna actually create um, frame by frame animation for um, the eyebrow. So this is gonna be the starting position. And the reason I copied it, because I want that to be the first frame. And then we're gonna make a few more eyebrows to make him look worried. So instead of redrawing this eyebrow, I'm gonna go ahead and use the pencil tool, or actually the line tool. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line. I'm going to select the stroke and make it rounded on the ends and just increase the weight. And then the only reason I'm doing this is because it's going to be easier for me to manipulate a straight line instead of an object that's filled. So I'll go ahead and hit A. Let's make it about the, let's make sure we're making it around about the same size. Grab one point. I'm using my arrow keys to extend it so it's the same size. I will use the pen tool, add anchor point tool. And I'll click in the middle. So this is going to be our second frame, so I'm going to move this up a little bit and do a Command C, which is convert points, and that just puts handles. If I click and drag, it adds handles to the uh, artwork. And let's go ahead and do that with this. see. 
I'm trying to make it so it's a subtle change. So one eyebrow is going up. This one's staying straight. Like that, maybe. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm going to copy that. So I'm holding down Option and dragging, clicking and dragging and dropping this up. So we have another copy. I'll hit A. And now I'm really going to move this up even more. And using my arrow keys to kind of adjust it. OK. Now, what I can do is I can grab these two lines and then convert them into shapes. So I'll go ahead and go to Object, Expand, hit OK. And you can see now it's just a shape instead of a line. I'll go ahead and hit I and select the fill color. And we put a stroke of three on all the artwork. So let's go ahead and put a stroke. So now we have, these are gonna be frame by frame motions of his eyebrow moving up and down. So let's go ahead and grab those and put them in their own group. I'll just select them, Command G, that groups them. Over in our layers palette, you can see they're grouped together. And you know that it's selected because it's got the double circles. So we'll call this uh, puzzled for his eyebrows. But we also need to line these up. So with them selected, since they're in a group, in order to align them, we need to double click on them and go into isolation mode. And isolation mode just means that we're inside of a group. So you can tell we're inside of the group because everything else is kind of grayed out. And over in the layers, that's all you can see is just the uh, eyebrows we just made. So now if I select them up at the top, you'll see aligning tools. And I want to align all of these to the bottom of the first one, the first eyebrow. So I know this kind of looks weird. We've got the straight line and then it goes up a little bit and then it goes over a little bit or up some more. And let's open our group and let's make sure we label these correctly. So this is the first frame, which is straight. Second frame is a little bit uh, the eyebrow is raising up a little bit and then our final position is three and let's go ahead and put those in order I'll just drag and drop one on top of two drag three to the bottom and I'm gonna even move some of these points a little bit so they line up I grab these points of, of the eyebrow here just so they kind of line up to the uh, right side like that. And maybe move these in a little bit. It's not going to be that noticeable, but okay. So we have um, this group right here puzzled, and this is going to be an eyebrow trigger. And we need to line it up with our actual eyebrow. And I'll show you how this works here in just a second. Make sure we drag it into the head layer. And you can see puzzled right there and we're just gonna line this up we'll line up the uh, straight eyebrow with the uh, neutral eyebrow or the default one like that so that looks super crazy right now because we have all these pieces of artwork overlapping each other but that's the way it's supposed to look um, move this in better just trying to get it in the right position. And we'll go ahead and save this. So when we go back into Character Animator, now you're going to see this weird eyebrow in our character. You see that? Everything's rigged right, but now this eyebrow is looking super funky and weird. What we need to do is set it so it cycles and we, it has a trigger. That way it won't look so crazy. So go back into our rig. I'll hold down my space bar and let's collapse the body. We don't need to see that. So there's that puzzled um, group that we just made with the three eyebrows. One, two, three. 
Those are the frames that we're going to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the triggers and we're going to create a new trigger. And we'll right click it and rename it Puzzled. And I'm going to go ahead and select this little box here and we're going to trigger it by hitting the Q key. So Q, make sure that's in there like that. So right now it doesn't have anything assigned to it so it's orange. What we're going to do is drag that puzzled layer or group over the trigger and now it has that assigned to it so it turned uh, gray. But now we also need to set its behavior. So let me collapse some of these things over here and hover over here in the center of this tab and click add behavior and cycle layers. And then we're going to come over here and you can see under cycle layers we want to select forward and reverse. All that means is it's going to show the first frame, then the second frame, then the third. And then it's going to rewind and go back from three to one. And then hold on the last layer means that when I push the button, the Q button, it's going to stay on the third frame. So it's going to look puzzled until I release it. But we also need to, let me move this over so you can see. We need to say latch. So if latch isn't on, if we don't select this, let me show you what happens. I'm going to go back into record. And maybe, okay, these eyebrows disappeared. So when I hit Q now, you see that? Um, it makes the puzzled look, but this is really good that this left there, but we're seeing the neutral uh, eyebrow underneath because I didn't put it in a swap set, which is really good because you might run into this problem. So with latch off, when I hold Q down, it just stays on the third frame, but if I let go, it goes back to normal. Um, if we go into rig mode and say latch, now all I have to do is tap Q and it stays up until I tap it again, which is really handy. But we also need to create a swap set. So we're gonna come over to the triggers, create swap sets like this. And let's right click it and call eyebrow poses. And drag our puzzled look in there. And then also we need to drag the regular eyebrow. That's our default eyebrow in there as well. So drag it on top of that. So now there's two of them. So we need to set the regular eyebrow as the default. So just click on this hand and it'll turn white. So now if I go into record, we have our regular eyebrow. And if I hit Q, it's being replaced by those frames that we made and I, I, I can let go of it, and if I hit Q again, it'll go back. So now he's got the puzzled look, now he doesn't. So that's why we need to have the swap set, because the neutral eyebrow is being replaced with those frames that are cycled from the hitting of the Q. So let's go ahead and make a couple more eyebrow positions really quick. Go back into um, Illustrator. And if you want to, just because it might be a little, uh, ooh, I'm running out of memory. Let me close, I think Chrome's always eating up memory. Okay, so again, let's start off with the eyebrow. We can hide the first one we did just for a little bit, just so it's not all in your face. I'll select the layer with the circ two circles. I'll copy and paste, Command-C, Command-V. This will be our starting frame. Now let's do worried. So, again, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna use this technique. You can actually just draw another eyebrow and actually let's go ahead and do that just so you guys can see a different way of doing it. I use that line, that's kind of maybe a little too much. So I'm gonna draw a square. I hit N just like I did at the beginning when we were creating the artwork. We'll curve out the edges, make it look a little more organic again. 
and let's make sure that we have a couple of points in the center so I'm just I hit a so I can select specific points I'm dragging them to the center I'll go ahead and grab those points and move them up a little bit so he's starting to look worried I'm just gonna move these points around Kind of better that I do it this way because the then the artwork isn't so straight. So this is our second keyframe. And then we'll go ahead and just duplicate that, hold option down, drag. We've got a copy, and then we'll make his eyebrows go up a little bit more. I don't think you need more than three frames of animation for the eyebrows expressions. I mean I th I really do think that this is probably more than enough. You might only need two even. But I like having the um, neutral frame. Well, you kind of need it, otherwise it's going to look too fast. So you kind of need this copy of the uh, neutral eyebrow. So this is worried. And we're going to do the same exact thing that we did before. So the first one, rename that one, and then two, and then three. And put those in order. And I haven't grouped them yet. So let's go ahead and use the selection tool. Let's grab them all, group them, Command G. Uh, double click so you're in isolation mode, so you're just selecting just those. And then we're going to align the bottoms. That's just the easiest way to do that. So now we've got those. And double click back out into our main work area. Make sure that you drag these into the head group and you place them in the right area. So right over the neutral eyebrow. Let's turn that other one on too. So I'll save this file, save. And go back into character animator. Let's go to our rig again. Um, and we got eyebrow pros. Po <clears throat> can't talk. It's late. It's really early in the morning. <laughs> um, we have puzzled. So let's go ahead and. Oh, we didn't. Did we name it? We didn't name it. This is going to be worried. Kind of a worried look. We'll save that go into character animator it should update so there it is so we can drag this into the eyebrow poses into the swap set also so worried drag that in there let's turn it on to latch and then also we need to add the cycle behavior cycle layers forward and reverse and hold on last layer so, oh, I didn't assign it a key. Let's go ahead and assign that a key of W. All right, let's see what that looks like. So if I hit Q, we get the puzzled look. If I hit W, now it's got the worried eyebrows. And I can switch back and forth. And we can keep making more and more. You can make as many as you want and these triggers are gonna just be one button. And later on, I'm gonna show you how you can make these buttons on any phone or iPad um, and control use it as a remote control to control your puppet with just um, icons on your phone, which is gonna be really cool. But that might be another video, because this one's super long already. And let's go ahead. I'll go ahead and make another uh, or maybe some more um, eyebrow positions later, but let we'll just leave those for now because we'll go ahead and do eye blinks stuff now. So, in order to make a regular blink, we need to just draw a line in between the eyes. So I'll go ahead and create a new, I'll just use the line tool. I'm gonna draw a line that goes right through the pupil of the right eye. 
his right eye like that and we'll call it blink or right blink make sure you drag and drop that into the right eyeball like that then we'll draw another line goes through the pupil here and we know that's selected with the double um, circle so we'll call this left blink make sure you drag that into the left eyeball group and it should look like this you can see the pupil the line and the eyeball itself so there should be three things in there and we'll go ahead and save and go back into character animator and now when I blink they should be replaced with those lines which is pretty good it's um, it works for now just because um, we don't have the uh, eyeballs eyelids made but we'll go ahead and do that next so now let's go ahead and make some animated blinks I'm gonna do some eyelid stuff so this is probably going to be the, the most tricky part, I think, just because if you're not familiar with Illustrator, grabbing stuff and moving it around is kind of weird, but we'll do the same thing we did with the uh, eyebrow, kind of. So here's our left eyeball. I can just select it by clicking on it in the layers palette, double circle. I'm going to copy and paste it, just like the... Um, the eyebrow. I'm just gonna move it over here to work on it. So we're gonna make three copies of this because we want to make eyelids. And actually, you know what? Let me do something here. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna select the blink because I know the blinks in the correct place for splitting the eye lids. So I'll select both of those. Copy paste. So I just know that's that line's the right place. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this a couple times. So let me hold down Option, move this over, and then drag it over again. We don't need the line in these other two. We're gonna use a box. And you'll see what I'm doing here in just a second. I'm gonna hover in the center of the eyeball and it's gonna kind of show me where that center is. I'll hold the Option down so it expands the box from the center and I'm gonna draw it just about like that because what I want to do is get the top and bottom for the eyelids Then we'll do the same for the second circle not as big don't worry about it overlapping the other eyes and or anything like that um, because we're gonna use pathfinders so we've got these three eyes that are that we're gonna kind of cut out and let's go use Pathfinder real quick. So Pathfinder, if you've never seen it before, is a tool that makes you, lets you combine or divide or subtract shapes. So Pathfinder, I just open that up. It's under the window menu under Pathfinder. So you can kind of see by the little icons what they do. So if I select do the selection tool and grab these two the circle and square that I drew, drew and hit combine it just makes one solid object if I subtract it's gonna subtract whatever's on top uh, from the bottom object which is what I want to do and it's really easy to select them you just need to have your drag and drop a little bit over an object and it'll select the whole thing so I'm going to go ahead and do that for those two. Subtract. And then this one I'm going to subtract. And this one I'm just going to use divide because I just want to cut it in half. So we'll use the divide tool. I'll go ahead and select all of them. Hit I. And then select the skin color so we got the skin matching. And now I'm going to hit V. And let's go ahead and... Um, Select all of them and ungroup. Oops. Ungroup. And 
group. Oh, I don't think I that line cut through. This last one, which I needed it to do. Let me do this. All I'm doing is extending the line out a little bit. Oops. Because I didn't have it overlapping enough. So let's let's select these and use divide. Now we can ungroup it. So basically I'm just making the top and bottom eyelid. So we've got the tops here. Oops. Right click and ungroup. And this is going to work just like the eyebrow, but it's going to look really weird. So kind of just keep rewinding if you're having trouble with it and understanding. Um, because it took me a while to get it too. It's, it's a lot different than Anime Studio. So I'm going to grab these top parts and group those together. And I'll go ahead and rename this upper left lid eyelid whatever so that's the upper left eyelid and again we need to put these in order so let's go ahead and name them I know the smallest one is one this one's two and this is three Just make sure we put them in the right order and then I'm gonna use the align tools just like I did with the eyebrows I'll double click them select them and we're gonna um, align the tops so I'll use this one and then center uh, horizontally so now they all line up correctly like that and then double click and now we're back into the main group and that's that's probably the hardest part to get is the grouping and ungrouping um, like I said uh, when you group something you can select them all hit command G and then to work within that group, double click it. And everything else gets grayed out. So, and you can exit back out from just double clicking on the canvas. So we have this lower group. So let's go ahead and rename that. Lower left lid. Double click so we can align it or them. Oh, let's make sure they're in the right order. That's the smallest one, so we'll do uh, one, two, three. Again, we'll put those in the correct order. Select them all, line them up horizontally, and then line them up to the bottoms so they're all overlapping correctly like that. Okay, so. <laughs> now we've got a top lid and a bottom lid and it's it looks really crazy right um, let's go ahead and make sure that we drag and drop those into our left eyeball group so I'll select one hold shift down select the other one drag it in the left eyeball group now here's a little trick well it's not a trick it's just part of how you align stuff um, but some people don't know about it so I want to line these uh, lids to this eyeball, but I don't want to move it around anywhere. You know, it's going to be kind of hard, difficult to do. So um, let me show you. So it's inside our left eyeball group. I got to double click. So now we're in the head group. And then I need to double click again. So now we're in the eye group. So you can see that the eyes highlighted and then our um, lids. But they're still in groups so this is the trick on aligning uh, these lids to this eyeball I'm gonna select this upper eyelid group then I'm gonna hold shift down and select the eyeball because that's what I wanted to align to and then I'm gonna let go of shift and then click on the eyeball again and you see that uh, big red line around the eyeball what that means is I want anything that's selected to be aligned to this shape. So now if I hit align horizontally, this is going to move over right above the eye. And then if I say align tops, it's going to align to the top of 
FBI ball. So it puts it right into place. And we can do that with the bottom. So I'll select this group, hold shift down, select the eyeball, let go of shift, select it again, gets a big red um, outline, and then I can use the align tools, align horizontally and align bottom. And now it's in the correct place. We'll double click so we go back out to, into our artwork. Now our character's looking super, super crazy. But that's okay, that's how it's supposed to look. Go to File, Save. Go to Character Animator. Now he's gonna have all these uh, eyelids right there. And we're gonna go ahead and animate those. So go into our rig. And we're not we're gonna not gonna put it into a swap set yet, because the eyeball swapping is gonna be a little tricky, but we're just gonna start by going into our eyeballs. And oh wait, did I? The left one. So we'll go ahead and drag and drop. We can either add a trigger by at, using the plus sign or we can just drag and drop what we just made. And I'll go ahead and give this a lower left eyelid. I'm gonna assign it to Q, we'll turn it to latch. Um, give it a behavior of cycling, just like the eyebrows. Cycle, forward and reverse, hold on the last one. And then upper eyelid, we can go ahead and drag and drop. And we'll assign this uh, A, latch, and you can assign these to any keys. And do the same thing, add cycle, and forward and reverse. And then let's go back into record. And now, you see when I push A, that covers the top part, and then that um, S covers the bottom, and if I push both of them, it just does a blank. Oops. <laughs> but you know what? I kind of want to just get rid of the, the line blank, so let's go ahead and just select it and delete it. Save. I just did a command S. Let's go back in here. So now that if I blink that one's not swapping out, I can just go ahead and use my uh, triggers. Like that. And we can do the same thing with the other eye. So I'll go ahead and do that. I know this video is really long, but I want it to you guys to see it in real time and again, see how much I mess up. So. Um, this one I'll do a little faster. Let's get rid of the blink. We don't want that right now. So I'll just go ahead and delete that. Um, delete that layer. We'll go ahead and make, uh, select the right eyeball. I'm going to copy and paste it. Oh, I lied. Let's go back. I'm undoing because I do want to use that line so I know where the pupil is to dissect it. So let's go ahead and select that and then hold command down, select the right eye blink, copy paste, move this over here. I'm going to grab that blink line and just extend it a little bit so it cuts in half when I use the pathfinder tool. And then we need two more. So I'll hold option down, drag it over, drag this one over. It's okay if it's on, not on the canvas. And then we'll use the square tool. I'll hover in the center, hold option down so it expands from the center. This will be the first set of lids. This will be the second set. go. I'll hit V. And there's our Pathfinder still there, so we'll go ahead and select these, subtract, 
select these, subtract, select these, and divide. We'll grab all of them. Hit I, select the uh, skin tone, color, hit V, right click and ungroup all of them. I'll grab these top ones, group those together. Find it over here by seeing the two circles. That's gonna be the upper uh, right lid. And double click into that group. Where's our line? Select them, align horizontally, align uh, the tops. Oh, and make sure they're in the right order. This is one, this is two. Again, I can tell by just looking at the little tiny thumbnails, which is which. There we go, one, two, three. Double click back in here. And I'll go ahead and grab these bottom ones, group those together. Lower, right, lid, lids, I guess, or whatever. Um, I'm going to leave these out of order just so you can see what happens when you mess these up, too. So this is the first one. This is the second. This is the third. I'm not going to put them in order, though, so you can see how it messes up um, when you're animating in Character Animator. So we'll grab all those. Double click. Grab them. Align center. And align the bottoms. These are a little bit off because the, the eye's a little wonky, so I'll just select them and manually move them with the arrow key so they're kind of in the right place. If you zoom in really close, it's um, you can control them even better. I'm just holding shift down, so I'm just moving left and right a little bit. And nobody's even going to notice it. It's going to animate so fast, but... I want this to line up good. Good enough. Go back out so they're in groups. So just like the other eye, we need to go ahead and grab them. I'll hit shift, hold, grab both the upper and lower groups, drag them into the right eyeball like that. We need to align them over the actual eye. So let's go ahead and click on them, double click. Now we're in the head group. Double click again, now we're in the eyeball group. And you can tell by what layers are being shown over here on the in the layers palette. So, select this top group, hold shift, select the eyeball because that's what we want to align to. Let go of shift, select, get the big outline and then align horizontally and to the top. Same with the bottom, we'll select it, hold shift down, select the eyeball, let go of shift, select the eyeball again, align center and bottom, and save. So I'll do command S, or go up to file and save. Go back into character animator. And here's just a couple of things. Oops, maybe. There we go. Okay, a couple things to note that might you might see. Um, the, let's go into the rig. So, open the right eyeball. Now we can just, we have those triggers made, so we can just drag and drop. So go to the lower eyelid. And upper just so they're triggered by the same key. So you can see if they've got triggers by those little hands there. We'll go ahead and cycle both of these. And that's latched. And this one is also already latched, so cycle layers. And there. Let's go back and record. Now if I hit A, it does both eye, eyelids and then S does both bottom ones. And then I got Q. And there we 
go. Now, I think I must still have the blink there. That's why it's, it's, now let's take out the right blink and then save. So it's not doing that. Okay, so we got our character moving. We can grab his arms. Not very well. I, don't, I didn't put arm IK in there. We can have him wave. We can have him, have him be kind of nonchalant. Or, yeah. <laughs> let's turn it, let's do keyboard input for his eyes instead of my eyes so they don't um, drift off. So now if I do it, he can be real shifty. I can just use the keyboard. Um, now, all we need to do, um, to, so this video is not like three hours long, let's just do the mouths real quick. And that'll be the last part for this video. And then we'll do some other cool stuff in the next one, which like I said, is gonna be able to control your puppet from your phone. So you can actually be typing or you can actually be playing a video game and be having have a live animation also and just animate on the side with your phone or iPad. So, all right, I'll be right back and we'll start doing the mouths. Okay, welcome to the third part of the tutorial. This is gonna be making the mouths and if you made it this far, congratulations. It's probably an hour and a half to two hours into it. Um, and that's really all we're gonna do for this video because we've gotten some you know uh, switch layer or not switch layers um, triggers for the eyelids and the eyebrows and, and we can pose our character somewhat um, next video we'll go deeper into making replays and other kind of positions and things like that so let's go to or actually let me show you um, in character animator the mouse that we need to make let's go into the rig and as you can see under the tags menu, right here is a list of all the uh, recognized mouth shapes. So I'll go ahead and do a shift command four. I'm on a Mac, or you can just do a screen capture. I'm just gonna screen capture just those mouths and I'm gonna go into my illustrator file and I'm gonna go ahead and place that in there just so I have a reference of what mouth shapes I need to make. And I'm gonna place these. Now, if you're in Photoshop or any other paint program, you can just look at these mouths and then just draw them how you normally would. Um, I'm going to use clipping masks and I'll show you why here in just a minute. And first I'll explain what clipping masks are. Um, I'm just making another canvas so I have something to draw on. So a clipping mask is um, uh, let me just draw a few shapes. I'm going to draw a couple different colored shapes just so you can see what I'm talking about. And let's do that. Um, so how, here we have these three shapes. Um, the clipping mask is going to recognize the very last um, object or the top object um, as as the mask and what that means is it doesn't matter what color this is so now I'm gonna draw a circle and that's the very top object if I select everything that I've just drawn the top object is gonna be the only thing that we're gonna be able to see through to see the objects underneath so if I select clipping mask um, you can see didn't really cut off or delete these images uh, the other objects. If I double click, we can go into isolation mode and I can actually move them around within the clipping mask. So again, the clipping mask is just that last object that I've drawn. It's using it as a kind of window or a portal, which is really helpful because when I'm making mouths, I want to just grab parts of my mouth and move them around instead of redraw every single mouth. So if I double click back into our regular window. I can even select the mask and put a stroke around it. And so here we are in just our regular viewing mode. I can actually transform the mask itself. And then 
if I use the direct selection tool or selection tool and double click, I can actually move things inside it. So that may not make much sense now, but let me show you what I mean. I'm going to start drawing mouths. Let's go into our layers and I'm just going to select our mouth and I'll copy and paste it. Command C, Command V. Put this over here. This will be our neutral mouth. Uh, Rick is always kind of in a mood. So we'll just leave it kind of as a frown instead of smiling a little bit. I'll go ahead and hold Option down and copy this. So this will be our M mouth. I'll hit A, and all I'm going to do is turn this into a kind of a smile. So I'm grabbing those Bezier handles and making a smile go upward. Actually, let me come in here. I'm going to select these um, smile lines and put caps on them so they're rounded. I just think that looks better. We'll do the same with the uh, ones up here. Like that. And now we're going to start making the mouse. So this is the first uh, sound, S. So I'm going to go ahead and make some teeth. So I'll grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to just draw a circle. Rick's teeth are kind of yellow-gray-ish. Like that so I'm gonna draw a circle then I'm gonna um, use the selection tool I'll hold option down and drag it over and it's gonna duplicate that and then I'm just gonna do command D and it's gonna keep duplicating them so we're just gonna make a set of teeth um, I think that's probably enough well let's do one more and then I'm gonna hit a and I'm just gonna deform them a little bit so if I hover over a line segment I can pull them around I can either grab the point or grab the uh, line segment itself and kind of deform them. This is just to make them look more like teeth as opposed to just circles um, and more cartoonish. Again, this isn't anything fancy. This is just uh, something to make it look more uh, organic, I should say, more like teeth. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these. I'm going to group them together so I can warp them a little bit. I'll do a command G and that's going to group them together. I'm going to use the warp effect arc and the arc tool just makes it bend up or down in a kind of a bowing effect. I'm just making them look a little bit more bowed downwards and then I'll go to object and expand so they stay like that. So there's our top set of teeth. I'll copy and paste command C command V spin these around and actually let's do a shift command left bracket put them underneath like that and you know what let's go to let's unbow them a little bit we'll warp oops i don't want to do that effect warp dang it okay stop arc that's kind of putting them back down straight. I just want to leave that kind of straight. And so there's our bottom set of teeth. I'm going to grab these both and shrink them down. Cut just because I kind of want to match the size of the uh, mouth up here. Okay, so we have our teeth. We can move them around as independent objects. Let's go ahead and draw a tongue. I'll draw just a circle. Select the fill color and change that to a pink. Um, like that. I'll do a shift command left bracket, put that behind. And then we're going to draw another big circle. This isn't going to be our mask. This is going to be the back of the mouth. So we want it to be a really dark red color. This is, And then shift command left bracket, push that all the way back. So these are all the parts of the mouth that we need. And now let's go ahead and draw our mouth shape. So I'll just draw a circle again, an oval, kind of overlap the bottom and top teeth like that. And that's our topmost layer. I'm just recoloring it so you can see it doesn't matter what color it is because it's going to become a mask. I'll hit V, grab all those parts, right click and say make clipping mask. So now we have a mouth shape. I'm going to select the mouth shape and put a stroke around that, make it black, and set the stroke to three, like that. And then let's go ahead and 
draw a couple of mouth lines. I'll draw a line here. Let's make sure the rounded. And one here. Then I'll do a command C so I can grab that line and bend it and then we can start moving the points around so the first actually let's group it all together let's hit V and select these pieces it's not how it should look yet but just want to make it one mouth so here we go we're wanting to make this S shape so let's go ahead and I'll hit A and I'm gonna transform the clipping mask and it looks like the mouth is up on the sides and I'm looking above trying to get the width about the same width I'll hit V and double click so we're in isolation mode double click again because I had uh, those side lines so we'll go ahead and put the teeth down here grab the bottom teeth put those together because the teeth look like they're together here on the S and then we'll just kind of uh, make that mouth shape like that. Let me move the tongue out of the way. I'm going to grab it and move it. It's totally hidden now, but it's still there. So when we make another mouth, we can just bring it back up. And now I'm using my arrow keys to move the teeth into place. I'll double click on the canvas to go back out. And let's go ahead, double click. I'm just gonna move these, the side of the mouths up. Kind of get those in place. Oops. And try to grab that. Bring the mouth in a little bit. So if you can't grab something, just remember to keep clicking into the group until you're able to select it. There we go. Okay, so now we have our S mouth. I'll use the selection tool. The D is actually pretty much the same. I don't know why they made two mouths that look pretty much exact, but we'll go ahead and just duplicate that. Um, you can change it a little bit if you want. It looks like the S is a little bit wider so I guess I can grab the mask and shrink it just a little bit. I don't think it's gonna make any kind of a difference in the animation, but double clicking in here just to move these mouth lines in a little bit. Use my arrow keys. Double click back into the main window. Now there's the E sound, so I'll hit V. Hold option down, drag this down. I'll uh, hit A, grab the bottom of the mouth mask, move that down, hit V for the selection tool, double click so we're inside the mouth a couple times until we can get to the teeth, move that so there's some space in between the teeth, and let's go back, oh, too far, and then I'll move these mouth lines a little bit. Just using my, I'm clicking on the points and then just moving the arrows a little bit. There's the E. Double click back out so we have the E sound. Now, ah, so I'll hold option down. It's going to duplicate everything. I'll go ahead and hit A so we can grab the point on the mask. Move it down some more. I'll hit V so we can click into the um, isolation mode and find the teeth. Let's drag those all the way out and let's grab the tongue and move that up because you can see that we can just see the tongue on the bottom. Bring that up, double click and keep double clicking until we get the side of the mouth. Just gonna grab these points and move them down a little bit. Hit V, we'll come back out. There's our AW. Ah. Hit V. Hold option down. I'm holding shift down so it's going straight down. We're gonna have to line them all up together. 
eventually anyway, but the uh, UH sound is almost the same as the ah, uh, it's just a little bit more closed. So let's go ahead and even if you're not in isolation mode, sometimes you can actually pick certain objects. Um, it's kind of tricky, but if you hit A and click inside it, you can actually grab it also. So I'm going to move the tongue up a little bit. And then I'm going to move the uh, clipping mask up. Let's bring in the um, side of the mouth a little bit or change that shape just a little bit. Grab these handles, turn it in. This so it looks different. And same thing with the side of the mouth. Um, because I'm using the direct selection tool, I can click on points without going into the isolation mode. And I know some of you are watching this and like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but um, it's just one of the ways you can manipulate things. Usually you have to go inside and grab the whole object. Um, okay, now we have the uh sound, now the O-H, O sound. So I'll hold option down, duplicate that. And this time I'll hit A. I'll go ahead and grab the clipping mask sides. And then grab the handles to make this more of an O shape. Grabbing those handles and making it more circular. I know, it, and I know this seems like it's taking a long time, but it's actually a good time saver, you know, as far as, um, let's move the teeth up out of the way. Maybe grab the tongue and put a little bit of it in there. Go back out. I'll keep double clicking till I can grab the lines of the mouth. Bring those in so we have kind of O shape. Um, yeah, it's a time saver for me, it's just as far as I've already made, what, five mouths, six mouths? Six, seven, eight, something like that. I'll go ahead and duplicate this. The R sound is even smaller. So we'll just... I'm holding shift down and I'm selecting the four points of the clipping mask. Then I'm hitting V and I'm just going to shrink it down, which is pretty easy to do. And hit V. We'll uh, grab these lines, bring those in a little bit. And remember, at any time you can come back and adjust. If the mouths look bad or whatever, you can come back in and um, redo them and it'll transfer directly back into character animator so it's not like this is set in stone and the W or the U sound is even smaller so let's do that again V make this really small Grab the points with the direct selection tool. And this is just something you have to get used to if you're using Illustrator. Uh, if you're in Photoshop, just paint, paint these mouths. Um, it's probably going to be easier for you. Um, the F sound. Let's go ahead and just copy this one because it's almost, it's open more. So I'll just hold Option down, bring it down to here. For the F sound, you kind of bite the top or bottom lip a little bit. So I'm going to grab this mask and bring bring the point up a little bit. And I'll go ahead and reshape the uh, mouth lines. The mouth lines make this a little bit longer than it needs to be. Um, that's just the way the Rick and Morty characters are. They have these little defining mouth lines on the side so and then we'll go ahead and add some
curves on here just so it looks like it's biting the lip a little bit. So I'm just gonna put these little lines here like that. Grab these points, move them up a little bit. And since we just drew new lines, let's make sure that we put them in a group so they're all together. So we'll select everything and group again. So there's the F mouth. Looks kind of janky, but whatever. Let's go ahead and duplicate this mouth for the L. That's going to be easier to manipulate. I'll hit A and I'll just grab the tongue itself. Maybe. Oh no, double click in isolation mode. Let's go ahead and the tongue kind of touches the back of the teeth. So we'll go ahead and just do that. This is for the L sound. And maybe let's change the mouth shape a little bit just so it looks a little different. Always change it later. Oops. There you go. And smile. Kind of looks like the S already, so we'll just grab that, duplicate it, and bring it down here. And then let's go ahead and Big smile. Sometimes I use the arrow keys. Sometimes I just drag and drop. Change the mouth sides real quick. And again, I apologize for how long this video is, if anybody's still watching. Um, but like I said, I really, really like to let people see how long it takes. I think a lot of people will watch tutorials, videos, and think that because they're edited down that it takes, it doesn't take that long to do things. And this is fairly fast, but um, yeah, it just, it just takes time. So, and then surprised. We won't even do surprise right now. Um, let's just leave that there. So ma let's make sure that we have these all named correctly. So let's open up our layers palette because we made all these and they're just groups now because um, we haven't named them. So I'm just gonna click on the first mouth, which is neutral. You can tell it's selected. because It's got that little square by it and the two circles. So let's just double click that, name it neutral. And make sure you name these correctly because that's how Character Animator recognizes the mouths. So you know, neutral. I'm going to drag it up to the top just so it's in the same um, order that Character Animator has it listed. I don't think that's important, but you never know. So let's select the second one. You can see that's selected. We'll name it M. Put that in place. Select the next one. That's called S, so we'll rename that, drag that up, and this one's D, drag that upward, this is E, E, uppercase, lowercase, and then there's the A, select that, rename it to A, there. The uh, UH and O uh, drag that up into place R sound R drag that in the 
place. Oh. Oh, no, it's W dash. Oh, uppercase O, lowercase O. And drag that up under the R. There's our F. And that's in place already. There's our L. I think. Wait, let's make sure. Yeah. Our L mouth. Oops. That. And smile. And then let's go ahead and delete the uh, picture. We don't need that anymore. So I'll select that, delete it. Now our mouths have to be um, in the head group. Let's go ahead and get rid of that default mouth that we had right there. I'm going to select all these mouths. And then I'm going to group them. And make sure you name it correctly. Call it mouth. And then um, let's double click into it to isolation mode and then we're going to line them up. So select all of them, um, center align, and then center align horizontally, horizon, horizontally <laughs> and vertically. So we'll click this button and this button. Now they're all overlapping and it looks really weird and crazy, but that's okay. That's what it's supposed to look like. And we'll drag the mouth into place mouths in the place I should say let's kind of make sure they're on his face some of the mouth lines are going off but we'll just move it over we probably could fill those um, with color but we'll, we'll leave it like that for now so we have the mouth let's make sure we drop it into the head group let's drop it underneath the nose and then save that then let's go back to Character Animator and see if the mouse pop in here. Uh, give it update. Hold on. File. Save. And Why is it not uh, updating? Do I not have the right character in here? Let's, um, I might have copied this the character illustrator and it's the character animator is not reading it but let's uh i don't know where it's getting it from Added original. yeah it must be in a different place but that's okay we'll go ahead and let's grab the mouths Go ahead and select the mouths. I'll copy it, Command C, go into our file, and Command V and paste, and we'll put a, a, the mouse underneath the nose. Where's that original mouth? Let's get rid of that one. Put this in place. Save it. Animator. Now it should be updating. Taking just a little while. Come on, bro. I guess it has a lot to calculate because it's got all those mouths. There we see them all. It looks super crazy, just like the eyelids and the eyebrows. But let's go to record mode and see what that looks like. And yeah, check that out. Um, so now my character is uh, doing live lip syncing when I talk. Um, he looks super bored now or 
puzzled or whatever. And again, this is what's really cool about this is um, I can uh, set this character up to be used in a live stream and animate it. And uh, it's pretty much ready to go. There's a lot more other things. We can start making poses that we can trigger with buttons as well. But um, this is this is really cool. So that's the basics from what I understand, because I'm a noob when it comes to doing this program as well. So, um, but yeah, we've just made a new character that we can use in Character Animator, Adobe Character Animator. Um, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. Also, go check out Digital Puppets. Um, they're a UK based uh, company. They have a YouTube channel. They make a lot of puppets. They've already, they have a video of them making Morty. Um, and um, check out OK Samurai. He's the guy that's in charge of the tutorials for Adobe. So he really knows his stuff. Um, again, I'm just learning. Um, but yeah, we'll see you in the next video. And if you did like this video, make sure you like it and uh, subscribe and hit the bell and all that kind of stuff. You know, I don't like asking for a like unless you actually really enjoyed the video. And I know it's really long. So about I don't know, two or three of you might see this, but um, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.